All right. Let's get to it. Okay, so if I remember correctly, I still need to do... Okay, so I need to get a Divinity Kill with Hellhorn slash Awoken. That's going to be the next focus here. No, 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 no. So, are we going to do... No, 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 no. Oh, there we go. We want Restore, we want Root Seeds. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and run with the uh, Hornbreaker Prince this time, just as a kind of a a difference. I think I like the idea of uh, going with the Root Seeds for him. Uh, some basic enemies are going to have some additional damage. Okay. So let's take a look. Let's make this happen. Hey, Zach. It is extremely late for you. So we're starting with some Fortify, some Restoration Detonation, some March of Shields. Okay. I haven't played as uh, hmm. the Hornbreaker Prince in a while. Do I want to... Do I want to go for the multi-strike option? Oh, I'm glad that you're here for as long as you want to be. I'm sorry for starting so late. I had a lot of stuff I had to get done and uh, had to actually try to get a little bit of sleep at the same time. Okay. So I think I'm going to go with the uh, the blocker Hornbreaker Prince. Uh, I kind of like his style. Um, ooh, Impsicle. Our turn, add a random Imp unit to hand. Um, I like Concussive Coals, but we're going for a take damage, get things. So I'm going to go for the Impsicle. Sorry, our Hornbreaker Prince likes taking damage. So we have uh, enemies on every floor. So how am I going to deal with that? Okay, so we got a we got a uh, we got a queen's impling. That's actually a really solid i uh, solid card uh, to start with. I think we're gonna drop the hornbreaker prince on the top here. We're going to give him some armor, um, and then we're gonna go ahead and do the queen's impling. So this will work out in my favor. Uh, Train Steward will not be able to survive there, but I could drop it here. And we can just pump him up a little bit, and I guess that'll work. Oh, I thought that thing was supposed to die. I thought the setup I had would, would, would have that one die. I'm kind of a little bit surprised by this. Uh, I'm gonna immediately torch the uh, guy in back. Excuse me, torch it. Thank you. Um, do I have a way to? I ah, just pop the molting him. Just kill everything. There's kind of no reason not to go for that. Um, right. Let's fortify up again. So I can heal three and deal 15 to this front guy, but it doesn't seem like that's going to be particularly useful. If I drop this other train steward in, we're only going to get a little bit of damage in. Drop the train steward here, I guess. Okay, so I need to... Drop the fledgling him. Hey, Wonder Girl. Uh, chat is working. Was it not working yesterday? Let's see. 
So he's only going to take 22. Torch her. Now he's taking 27. I can get up to... I don't think I can kill him. Not for you? Huh. I'm sorry to hear that. I don't know why it wouldn't be. Um, let's go ahead and kill that guy. Oh, because he's getting the damage shield because he, he killed the guy. That's right. Okay. That makes perfect sense. Okay. So we have the final wave down there. Kind of irritating, but we'll deal with it. Uh, let's drop... Pop that guy. Um... After killing a killing, killing blow, get damage shield. Okay, we'll do that. Uh, we'll pop a torch. Okay, this guy will now die. Okay, cool. Okay, now I just gotta deal with this jerk. Um, I think we restoration detonation. It's gonna get at least a little bit of damage on him. And molting him. It's not going to take a lot of damage off of this floor, but it's not really something I care about. What's this game about? Uh, so this game is very similar to uh, uh, to Slay the Spire that we did before. Um, it has that uh, card game aspect to it where uh, I'm playing cards in order to beat my opponents, building a deck, random events, upgrading cards, so on and so forth. Um, some differences here is that uh, this is, or Slay the Spire is more me going through a map and um, making stuff happen. Uh, this game. This game is a little bit more like a tower defense game. I have incoming units coming onto the train, going layer by layer, and I need to build up a defense that kills all the enemies as they come through. Um, so at the end of battles, I'm making decisions on what cards do I want in my deck. Uh, how do I want to kind of uh, make adjustments? How do I want to play? And then I'm also making decisions, especially on maps, about... Uh, I have always have two tracks. And each track has a different set of bonuses I can get. So I decide which track I go down. Uh, so, for example, this track over here gives me some money. It gives me access to the Merchant of Magic, which allows me to upgrade my spell cards. Uh, this track gives me the access to Merchant of Steel, which allows me to upgrade my creature cards. Also gives me access to the Awoken Banner, so I can get an Awoken unit. And on both tracks, I can access the Divine Temple, which allows me to make the game harder in exchange for upgrading my cards. Um, I think I'm going to go with the Animus of Will here. And then I can get Endless on a unit. Is there any... I think, like, Endless on Animus of Will with a Rage 7 sounds good. And let's go ahead and sacrifice a Train Steward to up the Animus of Will. So now I have a really cheap and easy creature to drop that will do uh, a ton of damage if it actually... If anything happens, like, that, that Animus is going to be... Absolutely amazing. So, my uh, my train has three different layers. So, layer one, layer two, layer three. And the top layer is my pyre. My pyre is effectively me. This is my actual hit points. You can also see that up in the upper left-hand corner here. Um, but yeah, my pyre is my actual hit points. So, enemy units every turn are going to, uh, are going to ascend... Uh, and I want to kill as many of them as I can on the way up, just to make sure that they don't get to uh, they don't get to really do anything. Uh, every turn I draw cards, very similar to stuff like Magic Gathering, so on like that. Uh, I have uh, mana that pops up; they call it Ember. Uh, so I can spend three this turn, and this is how much I have to spend it on. Uh, enemies always attack first, unless I have an a ability called Quick. So I have to be aware that enemies are going to attack. They have damage here, so. 5 damage, 5 damage, 7 times 2 damage, 5 damage. Um, so I have to be aware that right now I'm looking at uh, 14, 19, 29 damage. So if I drop my Hornbreaker Prince in, for example, uh, it only has 15 health. So it's just going to flat die. So I need to find some way to get through this without having the Prince fall over. Um, he is my champion. He is kind of my main character here. 
Uh, I think what I want to do is I am going to... How do I want to do this? I think we're going to go ahead and horn break this guy, get rid of him, because he's the primary damage dealer here. I'm going to drop a Pyre Chomper in front to soak a hit, and that's going to allow me to get some work done. Uh, the, uh, Animus of Will is going to drop the back line. Now this entire group dies. And then we root seeds the Animus of Will, so that way we do a bunch of damage. Yeah, I'll try to explain stuff as we go through. Um, but the, uh, the primary point you should be aware of is that I am just trying to, uh, kill my opponents before they get a chance to actually do anything. Uh, so, sometimes that is, uh, that is easy to do, and sometimes that is very not easy to do. I'm going to drop a Welder Helper in front. Okay, so that works, and all of these guys will die, and Root Seeds the back line. Yeah, so bit really what we're doing is I'm trying to build a strategy based on the cards that the uh, that the game offers me. So, uh, the game offers me a variety of different things that I can do that will allow me to uh, kind of build a strategy. And right now, my strategy is to... Uh, number one is to upgrade my, uh, my champion. So that's my Hornbreaker Prince here. So my Hornbreaker Prince has two abilities. Uh, he has uh, Slay, which means he uh, this ability happens whenever he actually kills something. So he has Slay, Armor 10. Uh, so every time he kills something, he gets 10 armor. And that's just temporary hit points that will just stack up uh, and uh, stop him from taking damage. So now he has 29 hit points. But also he has Revenge or Rage 2. Revenge says every time he takes damage, he gains two stacks of Rage. Rage says he gets plus two damage for every stack of Rage. So right now he has four stacks of Rage, which is plus eight damage. Rage decays at one stack per turn, though. So it's a slow, uh, slow kind of temporary upgrade for him. Uh, I also have this Animus of Will behind. So the Animus of Will has this ability, Endless. Uh, Endless says that if the Animus of Will dies, it just goes back on top of my library instead of being pitched to my discard pile uh, or my consumed pile. So I get to kind of keep this creature here. And it also has Multi-Strike, so it attacks three times every turn. And uh, that's not necessarily just one unit. If he kills a unit, the next attack goes to the next unit. So I'm able to kind of build this really powerful attacker. This creature by itself deals tw uh, 22 times 3 damage, 66 damage. And then I'm getting imps every turn. I can summon the Welder Helper, which the Welder Helper pops in. And whatever creature is in front at the time the uh, card lands on the battlefield, by the time it actually resolves, whatever creature is in front... Uh, gets 20 armor. So I'm just going to throw it in as a tank and just let it kind of do its job. Um, we're going to rest Restoration Detonation. It heals for 10, and then it deals damage to the front enemy unit. I have no other enemy units, but it will just uh, heal my uh, heal my champion. And then I'm going to throw some shields uh, on the imp. And the reason we're doing this is that we are currently on the boss wave. Uh, so in these fights, there are a certain number of waves, and after that certain number of waves, the boss spawns. Uh, so in this particular fight, uh, it took, like, what, three ways for the boss to spawn. Now he's here. And the boss does something called Relentless. Uh, most enemies, they spend one round on the on the uh, floor, and then they move up to the next floor. But a Relentless enemy, which so far as I know is only bosses, uh, Relentless enemies just kind of stick around. They, they don't go anywhere. They just kind of stay with you. Um, so this guy is Relentless. He will stay on this floor until he kills all of my creatures or until I kill him. Which is a, uh, a system that I am very okay with. I am very okay with him uh, sticking around with me. And then these X's tell me who's going to die. So I know that as is with the game, set as it is with the abilities as they are, at the end of this round, remember this round will go until either I, my guys are dead until he's dead. At the end of this round, my welder helper is going to die, but this clergyman's going to die, and the boss is going to die. And as soon as the boss dies, uh, the uh, the battle's over, and I get to move on. So right now, my entire strategy is to have my champion kind of be here and do some do some heavy damage. You know, he's not a he's not he's not a um a weak uh, character. But the real strategy is to make sure that that uh, multi-hit guy in the back is able to get as much damage in as it possibly can. But this strategy may change depending on what cards I get. Here we go for Ritual of Battle. Um, 
Like buying grass. Then... Anima's speed is feeling really good here. Shattered Shell's also feeling pretty solid. Um... I think we're gonna go for the Animus of Speed for now. The Animus of Speed has Quick. Quick is the exception to that enemy strike first rule. Quick allows me to strike first. Uh, so I can place that unit down. The problem is it's very fragile. So I have to find some way to keep it safe. I'm gonna go for an artifact here. Artifacts uh, permanently adjust the way uh, the battle uh, goes uh, from here on out. I'm gonna grab the Rail Hammer. So every time I get any armor, I get four additional armor on my units. We're going to grab an additional unit. Uh, we have options for uh, the Steelworker, which applies armor to friendly units at the end of every turn. Or I can grab the Branded Warrior, uh, which, upon killing an enemy, gets Rage 3 to all friendly units. So it stacks my uh, stacks my um, uh, my damage up. Uh, so we're going to go with that. I also haven't upgrade. I haven't uh, uh, mastered that card. I haven't beat the game with that card. It's also a reason I want to go for that. We also get to go to the Concealed Caverns. This is a random event that will do something useful for me. Uh, so this allows me to either get the Doors card or the Hook card. Uh, the Doors card uh, causes a unit to go from an upper level down to a uh, to the bottom floor and applies Days 2, so I can use it to move enemies around. Uh, the Hook card takes an enemy from the ground floor, or any floor really, and moves up to my Pyre room. Uh, my Pyre can defend itself. It does 20 damage per turn. And the Hook moves the enemy up to the top, and then they are dazed for three turns. So for three turns, the Pyre is just going to smack him in the face. So basically... The Pyre is going to deal at least 60 damage to that enemy, uh, which could be a good way for me to control enemies and allow me to control the battlefield. Uh, both of them are good. I'm going to go for the doors, though, because it's free. It's a, uh, it's a, it, it, it casts for free, which is very useful for me. Then we're going to go back to the Divine Temple and see, is there any sp uh, any upgrades here that I really want to do? Um... So I got a couple options. I have Spell Chain, which says that when I cast a spell, I gain a copy of that spell in my hand. Uh, the copy costs one more mana than the original did, uh, and it has Purge. So once I use the copy, it just goes away. Uh, unfortunately, I don't really have any cards that uh, that I really feel Spell Chain would be important on. So I think we're going to kind of wait on that. I also have the spell, intrin uh, the spell Update Intrinsic, which says that the spell starts in my hand. Uh, so I have it in my opening hand, but I don't really, again, have any cards that I feel like Intrinsic would be very useful on. So the last thing I can do is I can fuse, uh, fuse characters. I can take, um, one of these, uh, units and, uh, sacrifice it and put its stats on another unit. So I can sacrifice this Train Steward and give plus 5 damage and plus 15 health to either, uh, the Branded Warrior or the Animus of Speed. I'm gonna give it to the Animus of Speed. Which is going to make this thing uh, bigger. So it's going to deal 30 damage per turn and also has 18 health. Uh, which, more damage on a quick creature uh, just means I get to kill things faster. And now, I guess go to the next boss. So we get to play with Talus the Architect. Uh, she is uh, our first actual boss. Um, first real boss. So her ability is that all of my enemy units will enter with armor 5. So they start with 5 armor. And then every turn, whatever floor Talus happens to be on, she's going to deal damage and push uh, whatever damage she, uh, whatever unit she deals damage to, to the back of the line, which means that uh, it won't be the one taking damage. And that can really screw with my, um, that can really screw with some of my strategies, so I'm not really pleased by this concept. <clears throat> okay, so how do I want to do things? So, I could do the Branded Warrior, um... If it kills things, you know, it applies rage, and that really helps down on uh, on this bottom lane. Uh, the problem is, I really want this this uh, animus of speed to be down here, because it's going to help me kill things. Uh, so I don't know if we're going to put the Brand of Warrior on bottom. But we are going to do... So we're going to put the train, uh, the, uh, train steward animus of speed uh, creature here. So now this guy dies. And then I'm going to take my Pyre Chomper. Summoning this guy just gets me four energy. And it's going to allow me to set up this uh, bot floor a little bit better. Toss my Branded Warrior here, and I'm going to toss a Train Steward right in front of him just to kind of body block for him, because I don't really value the Train Stewards very much right now. And then I'm going to take my Torch, and I'm just going to deal a little bit of damage to this Mage back here, because the Mage is going to be healing people, and I really don't appreciate that. Now we just let the fight play out. Okay, so, the fight, so that fight's over. I was able to kill one of my enemies... Uh, and, uh, and now we move on. So now we get to see what we want to do next. So I have one slot open down here. Uh, we are able to kill, again, exactly one unit. I'm gonna drop the Welder Helper down here. So now, all of a sudden, we, uh, 
just my guy's not going to take any damage. He's going to be building up, um, you know, a ton of armor. And then uh, i got to decide what I want to do here. Uh, I need to be able to kill both these units. So I think we're going to go ahead and drop this Animus of Will. Can't drop it there because I don't have the space. So I guess Animus of Will is just going to go up top. Um, we're going to drop a Root Seeds on this guy. We're just going to make him a little bit more powerful. And I'm going to fortify my Animus of Will up here. Again, entirely based on the concept of just killing enemies as they move up. And uh, this deck is looking like it's going to be a slow-to-develop deck. It's going to be a deck that we're going to have to slowly build up. Okay. So what do we got? So I have a healer here who's body blocking, which really sucks. And this guy does a ton of damage. Um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to Hornbreak. Hornbreak has the uh, keyword piercing. So piercing causes uh, the damage to go through armor. So I get five damage that goes in. This guy just dies. So we'll go ahead and do that. This healer is now not able to actually uh, do damage. Why are you still going to die? This healer doesn't do damage. How are you dying? Is this just not updated yet? Oh, uh, let's see. This guy's gonna die, so I'm not really worried about that. I don't understand what's happening here. Okay, well, we're just gonna give him armor, so now he's not gonna die at all. How are you dealing five damage to him? Oh, extinguish. Triggers on death, deal five damage to your front units. There's an ability on this guy. That was what it was, and I was missing that. Um, nothing really going on here. This guy's gonna die. This guy in the back is not. Uh, not really anything I can really do about that. Just gonna deal a little bit of damage to the boss and just have the boss uh, not do quite as well as it had been. And then I'm gonna throw the Molting Imp in front. It's just gonna soak that five damage, which is fine. Yeah, hi Squish, no Factorio today. Uh, Factorio is probably gonna go on the back burner for a while. Now that I have, uh, not only this, which I'm having, uh, a load of fun with, but, um, I also have, uh, Alan Wonderworld, which we'll be getting back to at some point. Yeah, Factorio's, uh, Factorio's gonna wait. Okay, let's see. Um, so you are currently surviving, which I don't appreciate. Let's give you some more armor. I think we're gonna Restoration Detonation and, uh, fully heal... My main guy, which is gonna, well, maybe not. I really don't want this guy to live. Let's go ahead and drop a Molting Imp in front. Just reduce damage being taken by that back line. Um, let's go ahead and toss... Now, we're going to Restoration Detonation here. That's going to deal damage here, so now he's going to die. Unfortunately, we're not going to get damage to this back line as much as I want to. Uh, which kind of sucks, but there's kind of really nothing I can do about it. I'm going to go ahead and just engraft. It's not really going to do anything right now. Um, so this guy's getting a little bit stronger because he has Encant. Every time I cast a spell, he gets a little bit more powerful. Uh, I don't really have a problem with him getting more powerful because he's just going to die on, a, on a, a nearby floor. Uh, so it's not as if I'm losing anything to him getting a little bit more powerful. Okay, let's see what things are looking like. Uh, let's go ahead and drop... We're going to drop a Pyre Chomper here to soak this damage for him. Um... Armor you up. Armor you up. You're going to kill no matter what, so I'm not really worried about you right now. Uh, let's... You're going to kill. Got... Yeah, I can't actually buff you at all. Okay. 
So we're going to go ahead and uh, buff this guy. He's not going to be able to kill, but I'm not really worried about that right now. I just kind of want him to uh, to get some stuff done. Um, and let's give you a bunch of armor. Unfortunately, no one's taken damage. Or no, no, well, I mean, you've taken a small amount of damage. I can rest right next to you and you do 10 damage. But no one's really taken damage, so I can't really take advantage of restoration, restoration detonation and get that big healing boom off. Okay, so these guys are attacking my main man, which is causing his rage to go off. Damage is going up. Kind of a huge nice thing. Now we're on the final wave. Uh, I don't imagine this is going to go... Yeah, this is not going to go especially well uh, for Talus. Uh, we're going to go ahead and horn break this guy. And then uh, let's tr summon a Queen's Impling to the front. Do a little bit of extra damage. Hey, my champion does not even die anymore. I always like that. There is no downside to your champion dying. And also, like, as long as you actually um, survive the fight, you know, there's no downside to having enemies go up. Uh, no, no gameplay downside. Having enemies actually uh, make it further up the train. You lose a little bit of points when you have that happen, but points, right? Like, you, you still win. You still don't have any problems there. Okay, this is my first major boss of three. After uh, the first and second major bosses, we get some really good bonuses. Uh, not only do we get money, but we get a rare pack card. So I get a rare card of some sort uh, that I can um, that I can add to my deck. Uh, so we're going to be going with, uh, I think, Spreading Spores on this. Not only is it a card I haven't upgraded. So if you see how this card has this uh, yellow border, goldish border. And also it has this uh, background stamp, like this foil stamp. Um... So this card's been upgraded. It means I actually beat the game uh, with that card in my deck. So I haven't done that with either of these two cards. We're gonna do that. My glasses off and give it. I can't. I wouldn't be able to see. I wouldn't be able to see. Like, so from here, like I can't see. It, it's kind of like I can't. I, I don't know how to how to best show this. The the computer's less than a foot from me, and I actually can't read without my glasses off. Okay. But we're going to go with Spreading Spores. So it applies Regen 2, so it actually heals my guys. Applies Spikes 2, and I also get a copy of this card to my discount pile. So the, i got to be careful with this, because there's a chance that doing this will fill my deck. will actually stuff my deck full of cards that I n won't necessarily want. But that's not necessarily a bad thing, because uh, Regen and Spikes are good. So uh, I did get that. So the first thing I got was I got my Rare card. Uh, I also get a Unit Draft, and these are all good. All of these guys are kind of tanky. So this guy uh, has sweep as his uh, as his keyword. So can I stand up? Uh, that I'd rather not do. I have too much of a too much of a belly to, to show on camera. Um, I also have no idea if my camera would actually pick me up standing up. Um, so sweep. Um, I mean that said, if you use points on hug the uh, hug the chat, chat gets a hug. Uh, I do stand up for that. You want to come here? Get this off. So sweep says that this. Uh, this creature, when it attacks, deals damage to all enemies, not just the front. Uh, Thorned Hollow has the summon effect. So summon says that when I actually, when it resolves, when it actually lands on the battlefield, uh, this effect happens. So summon, gain 40 max health. So it becomes a tank. The problem is it doesn't fill that health. So it'll have 55 or 15 out of 55 health. But I can heal that with a lot of these other cards. Uh, and then anytime I heal, that's what this rejuvenate says, when I actually heal the unit, this happens. So the Thorn Hollow would gain uh, two spikes, or the Awoken Hollow uh, gains Cultivate two. Cultivate uh, chooses the uh, unit on that floor with the lowest total health, and then activates the ability. So every time I heal Awoken Hollow, increases uh, the uh, uh, health, uh, max health specifically, uh, and the damage by two of whatever units are on that floor. I'm going to go with the Thorned Hollow, because I really need a little bit more of that uh, of that attacking power. And then we get the Major Enhancement. So uh, you get this on the first and second Major Bosses. These are uh, big upgrades to actually how the game plays. Uh, so first of all, my Pyre will deal 10 more damage, and also have 30 more max health. Uh, which is very useful in case enemies do get to the top, and chances are enemies are getting into my Pyre room. But I also get some other ability. Either extra uh, max uh, energy per turn, so I get 4 energy per turn instead of 3. Or extra one draw per turn. Right now I draw five, so I draw six per turn. Or one extra capacity on each floor. Uh, capacity allows me to play more creatures per floor. Generally, my decks tend to run very light on cost. You can see I have a lot of 
one cost spells, zero cost spells. Uh, Ritual of Battle is my... Uh, no, Squish is just screwing with me. It, I know who Squish is. It's fine. Um, Ritual of Battle is a three cost card. That's my most expensive card in the deck right now. Uh, so there's not a lot of uh, not a lot of call for me to go for this uh, extra extra energy per turn. At least not right now. Um, if I had X cost cards, it'd be a little bit different. Herzl's Compound, extra draw per turn. I don't really feel like I need that, you know. Um, <laughs> Cap, you have a you have a history. Um, I don't need an extra draw per turn. I feel like I get plenty of cards as is. And extra uh, capacity per floor always seems to be good. It's extra units. Uh, I have extra space. Seems to be good stuff. Okay, so now the game wants me uh, to uh, to make a, a hard choice. Now, this is not as hard as it could be, but it's definitely a choice. So on the left-hand side, I get three options. So now that we're in, uh, the, after we've beaten the first uh, boss, now that we're in tier two of the boss, uh, we get three options um, on, uh, on what's on either side. So, this allows me to remove cards from my deck. And you may ask yourself, why do you want to remove cards? You remove cards to make the deck more consistent. Uh, there's a reason why in Magic the Gathering, uh, you know, 60 is the minimum cards per deck on uh, most formats. And we actually do 60. In Draft, 40 is the minimum uh, cost. And we actually do 40. The reason why is consistency. Uh, it is easier for me to know that I will get a card I want if I remove the cards that I don't. Uh, so I don't want these train sewers to show up. They're not particularly good cards. They're kind of filler. They're good. They, they're useful, and there are times when train steward can be good, uh, but they're not good right now. So I probably want to remove train stewards. This hell vent allows me to duplicate any card uh, in my deck. Uh, so uh, any rare, any powered up card doesn't really matter. I can duplicate a card, and then the uh, pyre remains restores pyre health. Problem is, I only have two cards I want to remove, and I don't really care all that much. Uh, I don't really have any card I really want to duplicate, and I don't really need Pyre Health. I'm only missing six. On the other side of the tracks, I have the option to go to the Merchant of Magic so I can upgrade my spells. Uh, there's Money, which is always useful, especially down the line. And then there's the Hellhorned Banner, uh, which allows me to gain another Hellhorned unit. Hellhorned units are very good at damage, so I have a couple tanks. Now I really want some damage units, and there's a specific unit I'm on the lookout for. Um, either side, doesn't matter which side I go, I get access to the Divine Temple so I can look into a creature upgrade. Uh, and then I can also, uh, either side I will get the Dark Forge, so I'll be able to upgrade my champions. It doesn't really matter which side I go. And uh, Squish, I use, uh, and have used just for forever, uh, Garnier Fructis uh, uh, shampoo. What Seraph do I have? We have Seraph the Chaste. So it cleanses all units of effects which don't benefit the Seraph. So whenever the Seraph is on a particular row, it will have the stacks that I have of whatever beneficial unit. So, uh, not good for, like, rage. So we really want, uh, powerful actual units, not upgraded units. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna actually come back in here in a second. Let's go ahead and get our forgotten boons. Let's talk about our units. Uh, so I have options. I have a multi-strike horned warrior, so, uh, it deals, uh, extra damage. Um, you know, 15 times 2 is so 30 damage, but remember, it's on two distinct units, potentially. So very good for dealing with multiple tiny units. And then I also have the Alpha Fiend. Uh, so I have, um, you know, Alpha Fiend is a bit of a bigger unit. So these uh, lights at the top is how much space it takes. So remember, I did upgrade my space. I have six per space. Uh, so I have six uh, six capacity on each floor. Um, hey, Cynical. Uh, so I have uh, six space on each floor. Alpha Fiend takes half of that. And he's not really beefy. He's a 10 and 25. He doesn't really soak damage. Every time he hits, he gains five damage. So he stacks pretty nicely. And the good news is... That stack is not a, um, it's not a, a beneficial effect that Seraph the Chaste cares about. It's just, it's just damage going up. Seraph the Chaste won't have that. However, it does have a three capacity. So I think we're going to go for the Horned Warrior. Let's go ahead and upgrade our champion. So our original champion upgrade was the Wrathful upgrade. So that's on slay, gain armor, and on take damage, gain rage. Um, the problem that we have right now is that we do have, uh, hey, Lemon. We do have the issue where we are dealing against the chaste version of Seraph. Uh, and the chaste version is going to have these stacks of rage that I'm gaining on revenge. So all of a sudden, Wrathful 2 does not seem... I'll say hi to Coco for me. Um, Wrathful 2 does not seem as uh, as good as it could have been. So instead, we're going to go with Brawler. So Brawler, I get to keep my previous bonuses. So I still gain 14 armor upon slay. I still gain rage 2 on revenge. But this is going to give me multi-strike and it's going to give me a starting 14 armor. Uh, so my uh, my Hornbreaker Prince is going to deal a little bit more damage. Deals 30 damage versus the 25 here. 
Uh, less health, though, so I definitely need someone in front of him to keep him alive. Okay, so in here, I can spend 15 to give a spell Magic Power, uh, which uh, a Magic Power upgrade. Magic Power just flat increases the damage that I do. So I could give Magic Power to Horn Break, which will make... Uh, or damage or healing, too, actually. Healing is also part of it. So I could give Horn Break uh, a power up, which means it deals 35 damage twice. So that's, you know, 70 damage to any given target, and it gets through shields and it gets through armor. That seems really good, so we're going to go for that. Uh, I also have the option to upgrade a spell with plus 10 magic power in piercing. So piercing really doesn't do much in something like ingraft, uh, but it does do damage on restoration detonation. Uh, so this would heal up to 20 damage and also would deal up to uh, 100 damage to a target unit. I'm not really worried about it, and I don't really feel like spending 10 shards to, to go for that, because that does make the game harder. Uh, so we're probably going to leave on that. I don't have a spell I really want to do that on. And we also have plenty of money to go to the spell shop. So let's see what I want to apply here. Um, so I think going for maybe double stack on spreading spores. Double stack causes the spell uh, to do its uh, effect twice. Uh, status effect specifically. So I get regen four. Uh, so we'd get some health back uh, for four turns. And spikes four. Which means an enemy dealing damage to me take four damage off of my spikes. Uh, it does increase the cost of the spell by one. So that's something I have to be aware of. Uh, and then uh, I can also do Ritual of Battle, which stacks up Rage 20. The problem is the cost of that is getting very high, so I don't think I'm going to go for that. I think we're going to go for uh, Spreading Spores. Uh, I also know that I do have this upgrade a spell to cost one less. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and toss that on the exact same spell on Spreading Spores. So it'll still cost two, but now we'll do twice as much as it normally would have. Power Stone, I can give plus 10 magic power to something. Um, I think we're going to go for that on the Restoration Detonation. Uh, so it's going to heal for 20 and then deal up to 100. Oh, no, I'm still going to make the game harder, but I like to make the game harder for a good reason. So then I get to re-roll the shop and gain more options. Now we get Holdover, and Holdover is an amazing card. Holdover says, when I cast the spell, as long as I cast it, next turn I will get it again. So holding over on Hornbreak and just every turn having a one-cost spell that allows me to effectively just kill something is awesome. Uh, we're going to upgrade something else with magic power. Um... I think Restoration Detonation just upgraded again. And then negative one spell cost to Engraft. So now casting Engraft, Engraft for free restores a little bit of health, which I don't really care about. This will work nicely on one of those cards that upgrades uh, on uh, on Restoration. Uh, but I gain one energy. So actually casting the spell gives me more energy and I draw one extra next turn. So good upgrades overall. What's my favorite cologne? Um, so I don't wear cologne all that often. Uh, it's, uh, I want to say it's like Escape by Calvin Klein. I think that's the one I like. Non-boss enemy units restore all health when they move up a floor. So that's kind of a scary thing. Play Using this trial. So trials make the fight harder, but I get a bigger reward for it. Uh, so this, up this upgrade, Heaven Seal, every time an enemy unit moves up a level, they will get all of their health back. So if I don't kill them, I'm basically just jacking off. Uh, but I get an artifact for doing so, so we're still going to go for it. This could cause me to lose the run right here. So we're going to see. Really depends on exactly what I get in my hand here. Let's drop the Hornbreaker uh, Prince. You see, I'm only doing 22 out of this guy's 60 health. Uh, so I'm not really doing a lot of damage to him, which is kind of a problem. We're going to drop the Quick uh, on here, and then we're also going to drop uh, the Multi-Strike uh, guy on here. So now they're both going to die, which was very important. Um, I'm going to drop... Not going to drop the Welder Helper right now, because there's kind of no point of it. Um, so I'm going to drop... Uh, I'm not going to drop anything, actually. I don't really want to fill slots up with the Train Steward. And the Welder Helper, I don't... Well, I'll put it there, actually, because I can put something behind it. That's fine. Okay. So you'll notice this jerk. Uh, this guy right here. He has 170 health. That is an awful lot of health. And right now, I don't have any way of taking him down. So chances are very solid. He's just going to get all the way to the top, which is kind of a problem. Um, I am going to drop the Thorned Hollow in place. Uh, we're going to drop him uh, here. So he got really... He, he, he got boof. You know, you can see that. Uh, and he's going to gain spikes. So hopefully this guy will die soon, and then he's going to kind of take over. Uh, let's go ahead, and um, we're going to root seeds. We're going to give more damage to this guy in the back. Unfortunately, we're still not getting this damage in. 
this guy's going to get all the way up to the top, and I don't know what I'm going to do about that. And then we're going to march a shield to the front guy. We're just going to make sure he doesn't die. Uh, but this uh, this guy with his 170 health is a, uh, a major issue for me right now. I just don't have a way to kill him. He's just going to survive with effectively no health, and he goes up, and he gets fully healed. Uh, so I got to figure out a solution for that guy. Okay, so what are we going to do here? What do I, uh... The thing we're going to do is we're going to trap shoot this guy. That's going to drop him back to the bottom floor. Now, I'm still not going to be able to deal with him, but this allows me to set up a little bit better on uh, these on this next floor up here. I'm going to drop a uh, pyre chopper top floor, only doing that to give me energy to allow me to make decisions. Uh, we're going to uh, spreading uh, spores here on my lead man. Uh, so that's adding more stuff to my discard pile. Again, I just got to worry about that in case that makes my, uh, you know, just fills my discard pile full of stuff that uh, may not be amazingly helpful. And then we're going to start setting up this second floor uh, to have uh, to have damage. We're going to root seeds this guy, so that's going to deal even more damage. I'm not getting damage on him, which kind of sucks. Um, actually, I think we're going to set up top floor. So we're going to multi-strike. We're going to rage here. I have, I have nothing useful I can do with this torch. Okay. But this kind of worked out in my favor, so now this guy is not advancing as fast as he could have been. More big units coming in. Is this ground floor taken care of? I think it is. I think we don't have to worry. Well, no, it isn't. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and engraft on my main guy. Just get a little bit more energy. Um, okay, now all these guys are going to die because I did that. So that's solid. Uh, we're going to restoration detonation on the big boy. So he's just going to kill that. Or he will in a second. Um, let's see. He's going to have four health left. Anything I can do for four health particularly? I'm going to give you some armor. I kind of wanted to use Ritual Battle on him to give him rage, but it looks like that's not going to be... Well, no, I, I can just... Okay, we're going to drop the Pyre Chomper up here. Uh, put the battle on here. Uh, ten ten uh, rage is actually 20 damage, and 20 times 3 is better than 20 times 2. So we're just going to make you stronger. And then um, that allows me to Horn Break this guy. So that also means I'm going to get Horn Break na back next turn. <laughs> So this is a very slow to build deck. This deck is not explosive out of the gate on any given one of these fights. We really have to grow slowly. Okay, so this is just a, a turn where, where nothing happens. Um, I'm going to actually horn break one of my own guys. Partially to get horn break to come back later on. Um, also to allow me to put more up here later on. Okay, so here we go. Or just, Horn Break just keeps coming back. We're going to drop Pyre Chomper. I already win this fight, but I want to win it harder. Fortify. Uh, Torch is not going to get any damage done. So we're just going to Horn Break one of these guys. Just makes life a little bit easier. You deal a little bit more damage. Torch you. I have a Train Sword I can't do anything with, and we win the fight. <sighs> Hydrate. I do have drink. I have actual water over here, but I'm finishing my soda. <sighs> So we are dealing the big damn damage. However, it's taking me a while to get there, so I'm still a little bit worried about how things will look uh, once we get to the actual uh, second tier boss and third tier boss. So we got the artifact we got from that is Emblem of the Exiles. So the start of turn, the front friendly unit on each floor gains plus five maximum health. Uh, that adds up in a big way. So now, whoever's in front is going to be an even bigger tank, and they're just going to grow. So that was absolutely worth it, even though it was scary. Okay, Lemon's making me stand up. Rose, we gotta stand up and say hi. We, we, gotta, we gotta hug the chat. We gotta hug the chat? Okay, sweetheart. Okay. Rose and I are gonna hug the chat. So here's Rose. She's saying hi. 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 Chat gets a big hug. I love you all. Thank you guys for being here. 
Let's get some cards. So we have options. We have the Pyre Chomper, which is what I'm using to get all that energy. That's really useful. But we also have Battering Ram, which is pretty solid. And we have Tiresome Climb. So I gotta make a I gotta make a choice here. So Battering Ram's pretty solid. We are getting armor. I do have a decent amount of ways to get armor, and Battering Ram does a uh, bunch of actual damage. It adds up in a huge way. So Battering Ram could be solid, but I haven't actually upgraded Tiring Climb yet. So, I'm actually going to go for Tyrant Crime. It's not the best option for my deck, but, uh, you know, completion over time. So, now we also get options uh, on uh, the Ally Clan Pack, on the uh, on these guys. Uh, you're making me hydrate way too much, man. <laughs> so, we can choose the Wildwood Custodian, which, it does no damage and it has no health, but it lets me draw one each turn. It, it's okay, but I, I don't know if that's the uh, best choice. <laughs> Can you redeem lots of points? Uh, I don't know about that. That's not, not quite as fun. Um, we can do Restoring Retreat, restore 10 health to a unit, and descend it so I could lower that. I don't see a lot of really good... Um, use that. I will I will find I will find something to use lots of points on. I will eventually figure something out. Uh, then we also have Engraft. Uh, actually, what we could do... Here. There we go. Look, stuff to do with your points. Um, I think... I think I'm gonna go with the Wildwood Custodian. Even though I said I didn't really like it, it's better than my other two options right now. And I can just put it on the top floor and just gain card draw. So the game's basically giving me the exact same floor as it did the last floor. So nothing's really changed. Left side is duplicate a card, gain some pyre health, and remove something. Right hand side has upgrades, so we're gonna go for the right hand side. We're gonna get some money. I'm gonna go grab an artifact. So I got two choices. Spell cards with consume have a 50% chance uh, to be discarded instead. So options there. Or alternatively, Sketches of Salvation. Sketch of Salvation's really good. At the start of a battle, you summon... Uh, four random units uh, for my deck on the middle floor. Uh, the problem is that it's random. They will not necessarily be in the order I want, and I don't have a way to change that if something goes wrong. So we're going to go with the wing clippings here. Then we're going to go to the uh, Merchant of Magic, and again, I have options here. Uh, so I could give double stack to something, so give some, make something uh, uh, apply twice. Well, we are, we're going to lean into armor. So, uh, we did apply armor. Armor was a big deal. So, we're going to lean on into that. We're going to make Fortify stronger. Um, and I'm going to reduce the cost of it. And I can also apply Magic Power to something. Uh, let's do the same thing to this Restoration Detonation that I did to the last one. And now I can upgrade a spell to remove Consume from it. So, we're going to do that to Trap Shoot. So, we're going to make it so I can cast Trap Shoot whenever. Uh, so, where would Trap Shoot go? So, I can repeatedly use that Trap Shoot. I could give something plus 20 magic power and uh, and make it consumed, but uh, I don't find that particularly useful right now. <laughs> now we're going to see what happens. Okay. The battle gets ever stronger. So one thing that, uh, you know, for those of you who, who, are, who are betting on either direction, uh, one thing that I often do is I make the game harder for myself. So I'm continually grabbing packed shards that allows me to upgrade my deck but the more packed shards i have the harder uh that the deck is uh the harder the harder my opponents are they get more health they get more damage they get special effects um so you know be aware i am always making the game harder on myself and then almost every fight i'm going for the battle effects which means that the fight is even harder so this fight all my unit all my opposing units have spell shield too so i have to hit them with two different spells just to actually land a spell on them so i am making the game harder on myself continuously um let's go ahead and drop let's see we're gonna drop the wildwood custodian up top for the extra card draw uh hornbreaker prince prince dropping in he's just gonna flat die if i don't do something about that 
Branded Warrior uh, behind him. Let's see if we can get some kills in. Queen's Impling up front. You're dead. Okay. See, so, yeah, I am continuously making the game harder on myself. Uh, I am choosing... Um, uh, I am choosing the whole uh, make game harder myself because I get better rewards. Uh, so uh, choosing to add uh, Spell Shield 2 uh, to my opposing units does get me more money that I could use on future shops. So there is a reason for it. Okay. So in we go. Do some damage in here. Unfortunately, not going to be able to kill this big boy. He does... Uh, have a phenomenal amount of health, but that's fine. We're not uh, we're not particularly worried about it. Okay. So I need to figure out a way to start killing units. This guy has an awful lot of health, and right now I don't have a way to deal with him. Um, we're gonna throw armor on you. See, like I could torch, but uh, torch does not deal enough damage. And we also have this guy up here. I don't have a way to deal damage to this guy right now. Um, I think we're going to toss this Welder Helper right here. He's going to deal one damage to this guy. And then we're going to torch him. Now he's going to die. I still have no way to deal with this jerk. Um, I can deal 24 damage to him, but that's kind of about it. And that's not a really a lot of damage right now. Okay. Rose, you want to get snugged? You've been snuggling with me this entire time. What you guys don't see, because she's in my lap and my camera does not pick her up because she's too far down, uh, is that she has been in my lap, sitting up, and constantly asking for attention for about the past 30 to 45 minutes. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Right. Okay, we're gonna let her lie down so that way she can relax. Um, I'm gonna drop the Animus of Will right here. She's not gonna be able to kill this guy, but luckily we are not having, um, we are not on the, uh, healing floor, so there's a chance I can actually, uh, kill him on the next floor. Why are there no options for juggling cats? Uh, because my cats are not allowed in my room. That, that's actually the reason. Oh, no, I have cats. We have two cats. I have, uh, we have Iggy and we have Huey. Uh, both are absolutely fantastic cats, but they're not allowed in my room. I adore both of them. They are both absolutely fantastic cats. I love them dearly. Uh, let's see. What do I want to... What do I want to do here? So, we, got, we have some options. So... Let's... Pull this guy front. Let's see. Mods can't bet. You can make the predictions, yeah. I need to deal with this guy somehow. Um, if I put the Horned Warrior up here, that will deal with this guy. So he is now dead. I can put the Animus of Speed to the back here. So the problem here is that this guy deals 13 times 2, so he's just gonna... Oh no, that's you're gonna kill. Okay, that's fine, actually. Um, You're all dead, you're dead. Okay, we're gonna horn break this back guy. This is a, just the easiest one to kill, I think. Well, I don't want to horn break the front guy. Don't wanna I think I'm gonna horn break the front guy, because he's the tank. Yeah, let's horn break this guy. So he's dead, which means we're doing a bunch of damage here. Okay, that's fine. That is not my real name. I don't believe anyone uh, currently in this chat knows my actual name. Okay, so my champion is taking a bunch of damage. I need to heal him up a little bit. Uh, first of all, I don't accept donations in the first place, and that's actually one of the reasons I don't accept the donations in the first place. Um, let's see. I don't really have a bunch of options here. You're the one I'm worried about, so let's do this. Let's drop a Pyre Chomper here. That's gonna give me that's gonna give me uh, mana to play with, and reduce the amount of damage taken. 
Um, we're gonna horn break you. Uh, you're, you're you're not gonna you're not gonna get my uh, PayPal. And as I said, I I don't give that information out. Not for any particular reason. It's just not necessarily information I want to to give the general public. Uh, let's restore a little bit of health. It's not a lot, and you're still gonna die. So we could trap shoot. We could we could just daze one of these units, uh, which seems like a pretty solid plan for me right now. So let's go ahead and daze this one. This is the one that's actually doing damage. Okay, so both those guys die. You'll see that now I'm getting 13 uh, armor because uh, we are actually killing someone. Um... We're going to root seeds on you. You're going to deal more damage. So now this guy dies. You'll die on the next floor, so I'm not worried about you. And I can't actually drop the Thorn Hollow right now. I don't actually have enough um, enough space on any floor to actually drop that card anywhere. Like I said, this deck is a very slow to grow deck. This is not one of the decks I've had where uh, where enemies die, you know, extremely quickly and uh, and all that stuff. We're uh, we're 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 growing pretty slow here. Okay, let's see. I don't have any way to get a massive amount of mana right now, which kind of sucks. I would love to have that. So I'm trying to decide what the best use of the three mana I have is right now. So if I drop the Fledgling Imp in, it applies Rage to both of these guys, which would be nice. Or I can apply Rage to both of these guys. Either way, it's a pretty solid way. Uh, so it's either 5 Rage to both these and a Blocker, or 10 Rage to one of them. Uh, I think we're going to go for the Blocker, because it allows me to do some other options. Uh, we're going to Horn Break on this guy, so now he's going to die. She's dying, uh, so we don't have an issue there. Um, let's see, do 1 times 2. I guess we're going to go ahead and... Uh, Go ahead and root seeds, my uh, my champion. Yeah, the harvesters of death not having a good time. You think? Oh, the imps are fantastic, Lemon. Uh, unfortunately, you're, uh, I'm not playing imp uh, imp meta right now. Uh, you'd have to go look at uh, one of my previous runs to see imp meta. Um, but imps are fantastic. They're hilarious. They have funny noises. Um, I I really enjoy the imps. They're fun. Okay, let's add a bunch of armor. So the problem with this boss is that this boss does a ton of damage. Uh, and uh, in addition to doing a ton of damage, um, she also has stealth, which means that for eight distinct turns, uh, I can't attack her, which is kind of annoying. So I'm trying to build up defenses. That way I can actually attack her. Uh, it's not going well. She's just not allowing me to do it. Um... Which is annoying, because this is where all of my damage is. Hmm. Okay. That's not good. So she's going to take out my entire bot line, and she's not going to take any damage. Uh, I've I've beaten the uh, the game with imps like five or six times in a row now, so I decided to do an alternative meta. Uh, I'll I'll show you what we're gonna do um, after uh, after this one. Every every clan, I, you play two clans at once. So right now I am playing as uh, as the Hellhorned and the Awoken as clan two. Every clan has two champions, and I think I've unlocked both uh, champions for all clans. Um, so we've unlocked both for uh, for all uh, all clans, and so I just wanted to make sure that I'm using different stuff. Okay, so she still has uh, Spell Shield 1, which I'm not particularly worried about. Um, we're going to go ahead and Restoration Detonation, so we're going to give a bunch of health uh, to my girl here, and we're going to deal 150 damage to her face. So you notice that this has changed. Now we're dealing 240 damage. Let's toss a Fledgling Imp down. Let's up the damage here. Now we're dealing 426. Then drop the Welder Helper in front, and now you're dead. So it's just a matter of kind of surviving out her her uh, stealth. Uh, this boss's stealth is just a problem. Okay. 
That's really the only thing this this particular boss has is just that stealth. It's kind of obnoxious. And done. Okay. We are still alive. Let's get a bunch of money. So that that money that you saw in the circle at 150, that is because I did uh, the difficulty modifier. So I, I added that uh I added that extra challenge, that spell shield. Now I'm gonna take battering ram. Uh, Alloy of the Ancients is good, so ar like 29 armor for free. The only reason I'm not taking it is because we have other ways to get armor, and I would rather have battering ram. Uh, we also have options here, so I can draw one each turn. I already have Wildwood Consodian. I don't see a reason to have two of them. Uh, we could do Restoring Retreat, again, descending a unit and restoring 10 health, but we're going to go for Apply Spikes 4. Uh, that stacks on top of the previous spike stuff I have. Okay. So this is the second major boss here, and I get choices here. So choice one is I can go to the right-hand side, restore 20 Pyre health, which I don't need. Uh, cynical, I'm not surprised in the slightest. Uh, we also have the uh, Forgotten Boons, uh, which I can get to 75... Uh, 75 coins and I can go to the merchant of steel I do have uh cards that I can upgrade I do have stuff like the uh the, the animus of speed has no upgrades uh the uh the branded warrior has no upgrades the horned warrior has no upgrades so I have a lot of non-upgraded units but this other side gives me the concealed caverns which is nice which means I get some random good effect I get to remove some cards which I do need to remove those train stewards to get them out of my deck and I get the merchant of trinkets trinkets are these things they are powerful effects they do great stuff uh, I value trinkets very highly, so we're gonna take that left hand, uh, that left hand option. Let's go to the concealed caverns and kind of see what's going on here. Okay, so I get three options. I can either take the rail forger's hammer, which is gonna give me an extra uh, capacity on each floor. I can take the history of the world, which gives me up to three extra capacity, but it's on a random floor. I don't get a choice. Or I can get the locket, which is frozen nostalgia, negative one capacity on each floor, but I get fifteen magic power. I'm not really using magic spells as much as I would on maybe other uh, creatures, uh, other styles, but I really want uh, the capacity. So we're just going to take the free capacity upgrade. Um, that may allow me to not take capacity upgrade on the next uh, boss selection, which is happening right now. Uh, so our capacity is now 7. We have a lot of capacity to take units. going to take 15 more shards to gain a new artifact. So I have some options. 50% chance to remove all buff effects on any enemy when it enters the train. Solid choice, to, considering that I am making things harder for myself consistently. Winged Steel, when I play the third card of the turn, draw one. Uh, that is not a bad idea, So because I am playing all my cards in my hand per, uh, per thing. But friendly unit, units enter with armor 5. We're very much leaning into armor, so I think we're going to go for this. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the Unstable Vortex now, and we're going to, well, yeah. We're just going to remove the train steward. Get both these out of here. They're they're okay cards, but they're not good. So we're just going to remove both of those and then go to the Merchant of Trinkets. Three merchants here. Uh, three options. So friendly units get plus one armor per stack of spikes. We are going with spikes. We do have spikes. We have that we have that spell uh, that, will, uh, that will be there. So we're going to go ahead and take the Gnarled Root. And then I get two choices. I need to take the Jack Strips, uh, which deals damage whenever enemy unit moves between floors. I can take the Refracting Lenses when a card with Consume is played. Restore five pyre, or 50 Pyre Health. Or 5 Pyre Health. Hey, King of Pixel. Thank you. So I do have options there. Um, neither is particularly amazing. Two damage is especially good early game. It's not especially good now. And we don't really have a lot of Consume cards. I think I only have one right now, as a matter of fact. We have the, we have the Pyre Shards. Uh, I got rid of Consume off the Trap Shoot. So I don't really want to lean into Refracting Lenses. I'm going to go ahead and re-roll. We're going to see if we just get a 175 <laughs> artifact I like. We did not. I would have loved to have gotten uh, either of these two. Friendly units gain two damage on Slay or conserve uh, mana between turns. I don't have, don't have the money. And unfortunately, once you fight, you don't get a chance to actually do that anymore. Doing pretty good, King of Pixel. It's been a... Uh, it was a mostly depressed day, and, uh, you know, that was not, uh, not pleasant. I uh, had to sleep because of it. Uh, but other otherwise, you know... Having, having a lot of fun on this particular run. Got some stuff done on Final Fantasy. Do I go to the Final Fantasy uh, 14 Fan Festival? I'd love to. When it, whenever it's in person again, and I can actually get tickets, I would like to go. Okay, so the Alabaster Guardians. 
So this is not a hard mode upgrade I did. I didn't make this harder myself. This is just what Fell does uh, as the boss. So uh, the uh, the Weeping Angel type things you're going to see, the, the three angel statues, have Spell Shield 5. And uh, whenever she's on a floor... Um, whenever she's on a floor, she's going to give her units armor. Which I'm not really pleased about. So here's these guys. So you did notice that their health went from 70 to 100. That's because of the pack shards. Uh, so they did get a little bit harder. We're going to drop the Thornbreaker Prince in. Uh, the Prince is going to take some damage. That's fine. He's going to gain a bunch of uh, a bunch of armor because of it. And we're going to drop uh, the two Animus uh, friends behind him. So he's going to get some stuff done. You'll notice that we're killing just about everything. I'm going to drop the Fledgling Imp in front. That's going to cause us uh, to, uh, to power up. I shouldn't have dropped that in front, but that's fine. Uh, and then we're going to vine grasp the back guy. This entire floor is just going to go away. Okay. So, floor one is now clear. Uh, so now I don't have to worry about this obnoxious shit. So you'll notice that she just she just armored up this asshole. I'm not a big fan of that. Because I these will be in front of any units that actually ascend. So let's work on uh, getting this next... Uh, level upgraded. Uh, both these guys are gonna die. Let's see. We got uh, let's see twenty. So we got ninety off of you. We got a hundred and uh, hundred and twenty-eight off of you, and an extra forty. So we've got got about a hundred and sixty damage. I'm actually inclined to drop this alabaster guardian down. It won't let me move it. Okay, it's immobile. Cannot move between floors or change position on this floor. Okay, I was not aware of that, but that's actually fine. I'm not gonna argue with that. Let's go ahead and stack armor on my boy. We're still killing both these guys. Uh, do I have enough to him? Yeah, let's go ahead and root seeds and make uh, you stronger. And then I will toss a molting imp here. We'll get some damage on this thing. The Alabaster multi-strike is annoying, but only when Fell's on the floor, because Fell actually gives them damage. Otherwise, the Alabaster statues do no damage. Okay, we're going to drop the Horned Warrior in. So now we're going to start actually getting some damage on this particular enemy. Um, I'm going to drop this Thorn Hollow up top, and then I'm going to give it a little bit of health. All of these guys are dead. He's taking a small amount of damage, so I don't think I need to upgrade this floor anymore, at least for the time being. So we're going to go ahead and uh, ignore them. Gonna drop a fledgling imp to the front here. Let's get some more damage on this floor. This thing is now gone. And uh, I'm just gonna give you some shields. So I have this battering ram. So if I cast battering ram on this floor, um, it, it would deal 264 damage. That's why we're really leaning into this armor meta right now. Uh, she, uh, Not this version of Fell, Zach. This version of Fell is giving them armor. So it's giving armor 10. You can see that from the uh, from the Eternal Crest, the bonus here. So, Fell empowers you with armor. This version of Fell does not give rage. The, the version with multi-strike does. Which might be what you were talking about. I might have lost the plot there. So, my champion continuing to get stronger, stronger, stronger. Okay, that's what you were talking about. Okay. So my champion just kind of continuing to get more and more beefy. Uh, we're going to keep on giving him armor because he's just going to keep on killing stuff. And she gave them armor, which I am kind of displeased on. We'll have to see what we can do about that. I'm going to throw the Wild Custodian to the back line of this. It's going to get some armor. Um, so that's going to allow this to uh, uh, give me some extra uh, cards in hand. We're going to go ahead and Restoration Detonation uh, once, which is just going to kill this thing. Or do I want to spread spores on this floor? Restoration detonation's good, but could be spreading spores. I'd like this this thing not to be here, so we're just going to go ahead and detonate. Bingo boom. Didn't work. Spell shield said no. Okay. Uh, let's drop a fledgling imp in front, which is going to power everybody up, and we'll continue. Luckily, we are going to kill... Yeah, we're going to kill that. Not a problem. 
And these imps are meant to be sacrificial soldiers. I don't care about losing them. I'm getting those cards for free every turn. So I'm literally just dropping them just to soak a point of damage, and then we just kind of move on. Let's see. So this thing's still living. Kind of annoying. Not really much I can do about it. So three waves until I can actually start damaging Fell herself. Let's horn break this guy. We're just going to get rid of him. This is going to allow me to kind of dig through. Uh, let's see. Let's pump you up a little bit. Pump you up a little bit more. Not going to be able to kill this guy. Killing that thing gave them armor. So we're not going to be able to kill that secondary creature. That doesn't really matter much to me because floor two will take out the spear wielder. And they're just continuing to make my champion stronger just by attacking me. So not a really big deal to me. This thing gets a little bit more armor. I don't really care. Let's see. Let's go ahead and... Uh, I've got a lot of stuff here, but I don't have a lot of mana to cast it. That's the only problem here. I kind of want to just... I'm going to horn break this. All it means is that I'm going to get some damage in on her. Uh, but I don't want anything to be on this floor. I'd like to be able to drop units on this floor and actually get something out of it. We're going to go ahead and spreading, uh, spreading spores on my main character. So we're going to give him spikes. Nothing I really have to do here, it looks like. We'll go ahead and do a little bit of damage to Fell. Can't actually uh, can't actually kill her. Um, but we'll get some damage on her. So we have capacity. I think I'm going to go for an energy upgrade after this boss fight. Let me cast a couple of these other cards that have just been kind of sitting in my hand doing nothing. I'm going to go ahead and speed up combat. Okay, so big boy here. He has a ton of health. He's going to die anyway, so it doesn't really matter. We do have battering ram, so I could do a, uh, I could do a buttload of damage to him. I could do 240 damage to him if I cared to spend that. Do I have to upgrade health in anyone? Your... I could give you a little bit of health, but it doesn't seem important. We're going to Horn Break. Only reason I'm using it is to make sure I get it next turn. Let's drop the Root Seeds on you. And uh, we're going to drop a Welder Helper right here. Just giving him more armor. Hell having a pr just a phenomenally bad day here. Okay, so we're on the final round. Let's see. Let's give you even more armor. Fell gonna die. She gonna die tired. Uh, we're just gonna apply rage to you. And now my, my champion's the only one who's gonna go down. And we're actually very okay with that. I don't lose anything by having the champion go down. Long fight, though. Down goes my champion, and on the very next turn, down goes Fell. So Fell falls over. We're going to get a rare card. Um, Wildwood Tome giving me quick. Uh, that seems fantastic. We're going to go ahead and grab that. And then, like I said, I'm going to grab the energy here, just to make sure that we're getting a little bit more energy every turn. Okay, so I can go with a Merchant of Steel with money. And remove some extra cards out of my uh, out of my deck. Cards that are not useful. Do I have any cards to remove? Um, that's a that's a brilliant question. Are there any cards I want to remove at this time? Could remove some torches, maybe. Um, could remove maybe a root seeds. Those seem poten like potential options. Uh, but honestly, I'm really thinking we go the left hand side. Uh, restore a little bit of health. Doesn't really matter all that much. But restore a little bit of health. Um, but I think this Merchant of Magic is going to be very, very useful to me. So I think we're going to go to the left-hand side on this one. Let's go ahead and upgrade our champion. So I could either uh, gain him Multi-Strike 2 with extra starting armor. Uh, or I can get gain armor on Slay with extra revenge. I'm going to lean into uh, this left-hand side here, I think. Um, and give him Multi-Strike. 
which will make him one of the strongest cards in my deck. Uh, now that uh, that Wildwood with three hits is not actually stronger than him anymore. And then I have a choice between, uh, you know, I could lose 25 health to gain 150 coins, lose five Pyre health to gain 25 coins, or just leave. We want the money, so we're going to lose some Pyre health. And that's going to allow me to go into this Merchant of Magic. Uh, let's see. So I could double stack. What would I want to double stack? Um, my Rage 20 seems fairly solid. Uh, we could double stack this other Fortify. I think we're going to go for that. I think we're going to double stack this other Fortify and then upgrade that as well. And I, I don't like Consume, so we're going to not say yes to that. Let's go ahead and Permafrost the Battering Ram. And then uh, we're going to make it cost... Actually, before I do that, hold on. Before I do that, let's see what's in the Divine Temple. Do I have a cost minus two? I do. Okay, let's take the cost minus two on Battering Ram. So uh, now Battering Ram will stay in my hand if I don't use it. And it only costs one. So now it's extremely powerful. And let's go ahead and look for an Intrinsic. So do I, I'm thinking about intrinsic this Wildwood Tome. Uh, so I can apply Quick on uh, on something else. It means we're going to sweep through enemies a little bit faster. Uh, so I think we're going to go for that. Wildwood well, Tome's going to be in my hand to start with. I only have... I, I have very few... Um, very few creatures here. Very tempted to get rid of this Wildwood Custodian in, and throw that on one of these creatures over here. Um, I might do that. Nah, it's not, it's not worth the 25 shards to just move that status effect over. Okay, let's go back in here. Uh, let's give a spell a little bit more damage. Uh, so we're going to give Restoration uh, Detonation just a little bit more damage. And then we're going to reduce the cost of... I think Ritual of Battle, maybe? Actually, let's reduce the cost of Wildwood Tome. Let's just make it a, a zero cost have quick at the start of combat. That sounds like a solid idea. So enemies are going to start with 20 armor. But I'm going to get 400 uh, gold out of this. So this is going to be a pretty good thing. I'm pretty sure we can pull this off. Okay, so this is kind of a problem. So those these guys do 36 damage off the cuff. I don't have any way of dealing with 36 damage on, on floor one. Like, that's just not going to happen. Um, they will just flat kill the Hornbreaker Prince. And both of them do it. So I think we need some options. We're going to drop the Hornbreaker Prince on floor two. We're going to Wildwood Tome him, um, which I got to keep. Awesome. I'll be able to use that on a future floor. The Branded Warrior, top floor. Root Seeds him. Let's make him deal a little bit more damage. I could daze one of these guys, but I don't really see a tremendously good use of that, um, which instead I'm going to... Let's see. Nope, they, they get bonuses off of, off of killing something. So we can't actually use the Molting Imp here. Kind of sucks. Nothing I can do. Um, just wait for the next turn. Okay. Drop the Steward in the back. St trying to get through these enemies. And there's just not a lot of options for getting through them. Um, could Vine Grass this guy to the front. So now he's going to die. Uh, no one on my team dies, which is a very solid thing. Any of you guys gain stuff on... You gain stuff on Slay, so I don't really want to let you Slay something. Let's put you in the back. Give you some extra damage. I just want to drop the Wirewood Chomper... The, the Pyre Chomper in. You'll get extra damage if I do. I'm a little bit worried about these guys. They have a there's a lot of health on this unit. Uh, he's very likely to get all the way through, and I just don't have the damage to push him away right now. And Torch just not doing anything. Uh, I'm gonna put in a blocker. We're just gonna put in a blocker. That is true. That is absolutely true. 
Okay, what can we get done on this top floor here? Let's drop uh, the... Uh... Well, no, that's a problem. Okay. You guys are still doing... This thing still exists. Like, it... This thing is large. Uh, how do I want to deal with this? Could put the Thorned Hollow in front. And then Restoration Detonation it. Splat kills that guy. Um, I kind of want to tire some climb like this guy. It'll daze him. And then my shard, or, or yeah, my, my pyre will take him out. But it means I can't play anything else. Uh, the, the, uh... Uh, Animus of Will would be awesome right here. But we're not going to be able to kill this thing. It's, it's just got too much health. I think we're going to go ahead and pop you up there. You're just going to die. You're going to take 63 damage. Uh, unfortunately, not going to die. And you're going to deal damage to my uh, deal damage to my thing there. Not really much I can do. Like I said, this deck is slow to grow. It is a very slow deck. We didn't lose that much health, thankfully. Okay. So, I want to get rid of this guy. Like, I want him to not exist. Unfortunately, I got no good way to get rid of him. You guys are just going to kill everything because of this thing. This thing is, is the problem. Um... I can drop another Pyre Chopper in. That's not going to help all that much, though. He's going to get a bunch of damage on my core. Uh, let's go ahead and rejuvenate this guy. Now we're getting damage in. Still still not where I want to be. I really wish we had gotten a Horn Break, um, you know, early like I wanted it. All this armor is certainly not helping. Yeah, it's it's not a. Uh, we're not being as hurt as you might expect, but. Okay, let's horn break you. Okay, so if I apply rage ten, you will deal twenty more damage. You'll deal seventy to this guy, but that's not going to be enough to kill him. Um. If I give you fourteen more armor. Okay, if I give this guy 14 more armor, and then... Oh, you'll still live by two. Fortune. Okay, he's dead. Uh, Thorn Hollow's gonna die. I had no way to save him. And we're gonna kill two, uh, two of their units now. Okay, things are not looking particularly good for us right now. People who predicted I would lose might win this one. Because uh, I'm having trouble getting the damage on these enemies that I need to get. Okay, let's horn break on you. Drop Molting Imp in. Fine Grasp you to the front. Okay, this is fine, because he does no damage, so he's just going to go up he's going to die. Um... Yeah, I might lose this one. Getting the armor might have been the wrong choice. Like, allowing them to have all this armor. These guys with this this powerful multi-hit are definitely causing trouble for me. Yeah, I think we're going to lose this one. Oh, yeah, we lose on the, uh... Oh, my God. It has exactly one health left. So, here's the boss. I don't know if I'm going to be able to, to to do that. That is a that is a lot of damage that that boss has. Um, so, I can horn break this guy. Yeah, I don't know about, uh, about this guy. I don't know about... 
actually getting damage on him. Let's store a little bit. If I can drop you in, we'll get 81 damage on him. I think we tiresome climb this guy. Yeah, I, I, I just can't get the damage. So this guy is going to kill me. I don't have a way to, to deal enough damage to him to not die. Oh well. It was a good run. I was kind of worried about it from the beginning. Okay, so there it is. Let's go ahead and pay out. We, we, we got some place, at least with one level on the Awoken. That gives me the edge prior. Healing spells cost negative one on this floor. On this floor, okay. That's not bad. But we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna go ahead and try again. Um, do a new run. Start a new prediction. 